a crash test here and I die so you don't have to and welcome to Let's Play Cliffhanger on the snares. Right, so this is a totally blind playthrough. We'll just get the uh, the first baddie out of the way, and then we'll uh, see what all the controls do. It's your typical button mashing, uh, sideways scroll and beat them up. Right, okay. So got your standard punches. Yep. Oh, and a back fist. I guess that could be quite powerful. Strong roundhouse kick, and a normal weak kick. Okay, you can jump, and you can jump and kick. Ah, well, pretty standard stuff so far. And you can shoulder charge. Ah, right, super move, and you lose some health. Much like you do in Final Fight. You can obviously pick up weapons, which make the, obviously make the game easier, but you can't store them, you can only hold them. Well, <laughs> saying you can only hold them, but I threw it away, bugger. I'm sure I'll find another one to pick up. Oh, and you can John Travolta block. So, why did I choose um, Cliffhanger? Well, why not? I saw a review of it and everyone slated it, saying it's an absolute pile of shit. I thought, nah, it can't be that bad. It just looks cool. Granted, the handling isn't anywhere near as good as Final Fight or Ninja Warriors or Batman. Far, oh, fuck off. But you know, it's adequate. Sometimes games are just kind of just so bad they're fun. Yeah, it is very easy to die. The weapons come in handy a lot, it makes it so much easier. Hey, back fist. That's quite good. You just gotta be careful. Now, a lot of people overlook this game when actually it's quite tactical in terms of what you use or what attacks you use to kill your opponents. Although I'm just button mashing. They all have specific weaknesses, so once you find it, then you can just use, utilize that attack, which I do right near the end of the game when I get the hang of it. So one thing which they did right in this game, you can start the game with a different number of lives or continues. You can start with three, five or seven lives and five, three or one continues. So there's a certain amount of um, strategy involved, you know, you want all your lives straight up and hopefully that will get you further in the game and having to rely on one continue or do you want a sort of a balance and the more balance is what five lives and three continues so that's a total of what 20 lives whereas if you have three lives and five continues that's a total of 18 lives so it's just you know give it a go but chances are you won't get that far in the game yeah you can you can as you can see i've got uh, unlimited lives and you might think oh well that's just cheating that's just stupid not really, because there are certain sections where you've got to do timing, you know, time jumps, like in any uh, platformer side scroller. So yeah, number of lives doesn't help you there. Well, it does in terms of your replay, but you still got to get through the section. But when you actually come to the boss battles, you've got to do them all in one life. 
so yeah unlimited lives just means you get extra kind of continues which makes the game more playable and a lot more fun all oh, right that button's jump yeah you've got to double tap in the direction you want to run which i guess it's okay because you need the, the four or five buttons to uh, punch and kick Soon, but yeah, control just slightly off, they're slightly clunky, but yeah, they're alright. As I said before, they're not as precise as um, the main fighting games on the SNES. There's probably only a little bit of slowdown, four or five instances in the whole game, so again, that's not too bad. You're going to get a lot of sideways scrolling action. And then you've got other, well I won't go into what other levels do, but I'll put a note in the description if you can't be bothered to watch all the game and I'll just put the highlights of certain levels I think stand out and when the engine starts. Oh yeah, the fire just refills your health and triggers the, the next sequence. Huh, invisible wall. Huh, it's not Call of Duty. No, can't jump. Ah, oh, so just after, where do we go? Ah, yeah. It's Cliffhanger. We do a lot of climbing with uh, oh, Simon Cowell. Now, this is where the game gets very, very annoying. The uh, quicker you climb, the less number of bullets it takes to knock you down. So it's best to go slow, but then if you're going slow and there's multiple people... Oh, come on, die! Yeah, so he's a bit daft at times, but uh, never mind. What happens when you combine crappy heat detection and on rails gameplay? <laughs> uh, look no further. This isn't too bad, come on. Shouldn't be long left now. No, oh, fuck off.
Oh, now I hate these bloody final fight ripoffs, those fat guys. They're just really strong and they've got really good reach. So we'd add another element to fighting if we could grab people, but oh well. I guess that was too hard to program in. Nah, I don't like water. Don't want to get my boots wet. Well, oh, actually, they look more like leggings, don't they? I don't know, maybe he's John Travolta after all. Oh yeah, when you die it restarts you back at the same place, which isn't a bad thing, but I think then when you lose all your lives you continue to start you back at the start of the level. Now this is where it gets a bit more interesting, even with unlimited lives you only get one life to kill each boss, which makes things a bit hard the further into the game you get.
Yeah, nothing much really stands out about the next level. There's a few um, climbing sections where you've got to hang on to the rope, and there's a few rope bridges and a couple of different enemies, but nothing really happens until the uh, the next boss fight, which is at 26.30. And of course I die another 100 million more times trying to climb at about 22 minutes.
Bye.
I don't know why, but this reminds me of uh, Ye Are Kung Fu. Is that the Commodore 64? And um, IK Plus.
I can't bloody kill the bastard. Oh well, all you need is a window and a wheelchair and it'd be like the final boss from Final Fight who just hides in the corner and you just punch him to death. You don't want to know how many times these took me to do almost as much as the back cave. Try doing this all in one life. Ah, oh, it's fucking impossible. You can actually fight fire with fire and uh, kick back at this bloke here, but if you miss then well, <laughs> it will shit on you. Right, so as this guy is really quick and got a long reach, just wait till he stops running, getting close and then batter him to death. Again, this is another enemy that you don't want to get too close to and he'll kick you to death so you can either punch him and hope that he'll drop his guard and you can get some hits in or just time your kicks well or time them right but they're very hard to do. Now this guy's a fucking beast, a couple of hits and you've lost half your energy, so just get in close and just smash him to death.
So what can we say about Cliffhanger? Crap graphics, average gameplay, the plot's okay. Control system's poor, hit detection's poor. There's nothing really to write home about the game. And it's fucking annoying. One of the hardest and one of the most annoying games you'll ever play. But from the onset, if you know this and you don't actually pay too much for it, it's actually quite an enjoyable and rewarding game. You know, put infinite lives in and you have to... Well, you can only um, have one life to kill all the boss enemies. And you get a... Such a well, such a sense of satisfaction when you kill the bot enemies because you've got to do it all in one life. It's actually quite cool and you know very much an underrated game. I rate it eh, a decent seven out of ten.